Hey, Dustin Tibbetts here, financial advisor with Jazz Wealth Managers, and today we're talking about what are the best investments for you. We're gonna go through seven different investments and see over time which one is the best investment. I hope you're ready, I hope you're ready to geek out. Let's get started. Okay, so our information is coming from Financial Planning Magazine. They write a lot of great things for the industry and they happen to just send me a magazine that I thought had an interesting article in it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to 1970. We are gonna compare large cap, small cap, real estate, commodities, bonds, global stocks, cash, and then we're gonna see what happens if you just invested in all of them. So which one of those was the best performer? Take your guesses, let's get started. Okay, so here we go. We've got all seven on the screen there, plus we're gonna say what happens if we invest in all of these as a whole. So take your guess, which one do you think was the best performer going back 47, almost 48 years now, as far as performance goes? Well, we're gonna take a look at small cap first. If all you did, or I'm sorry, large cap first, if all you did was invest in the large cap stocks, which are things like uh, Home Depot, Walmart, big companies, right? Things like that. We can take a look at that and see how they perform. Now our benchmark, what we're gonna use for this data is the S&P 500. So for large cap stocks, going back here, you have 10.31% average yearly return. So when they say stocks you know, average 10% return, now you get a little bit of an idea why. Next, we'll go on to small cap stocks. Small cap stocks did 11.2. They typically do outperform. So 11.2%. Real estate, did you guess real estate? That's our winner, 11.94%. If all you did is invest in real estate. Now I should say that when we talk about real estate, what we're actually using here is the Dow Jones REIT index. So if you were to look that up, you're seeing that it's companies that participate in real estate, uh, investing in it, or companies that are real estate operators. So we're including everybody in this mix. We're not just saying, oh, if you bought a house, that's what you average. We're saying if you invested in the real estate index as a whole. Moving on to commodities, we're gonna use the Goldman Sachs Commodities Index. This includes things like um, oil, gold, silver. They're all futures contracts built into it. And commodities came in at 7.01%. Now bonds, I think you get the idea about bonds here, but what we're using, if you wanna track this for your own research, is the Barclays US Bond Index. That's what they used in the study. Bonds came in at 7.62%, which is a little higher than I would have expected, but keep in mind we're, we're counting all of them. We're not just focused on long-term or just short-term. This is bonds as a whole. Next, we'll go on to the global stocks, your international co um, companies, anything that's outside of the US, if you were to invest in China, you know, Singapore, I don't know, wherever you want to invest. That came in at 8.62%. Then we have cash. How do you think cash did? 4.95% return for doing nothing. Now cash, we're using the 90-day treasury bill. So if you wanna do research on that, it's not, it doesn't mean like you took a dollar and you held it and you made 5%. It's investing in that 90-day treasury, which is essentially cash. Then finally, we're gonna say, what happens if we took all seven of these? And rather than pick one and hope that that one did well, we're gonna say, what if we invested in all of them equally? If we go back 47 years, we're finding that that puts you at 9.82%. So when they say that a diversified portfolio of stocks, bonds, commodities, everything, real estate, equals out to 10%, now you know where they're getting their numbers from when we do other studies. Now, this is just the return. They call it the nominal return. If you just bought it and you held the large cap stocks, you're at 10.31%. The problem is inflation. What about inflation? So that, dollar, that return needs to be adjusted for infl inflation. So what we're gonna do now is go back and adjust each one of these. In the large cap space, now we've got a 6.03% inflation adjusted return. I'm gonna go through and just try to do these real quick for you. Small cap stocks, 6.72 is your inflation adjusted return. Real estate, 7.6. You're starting to see how when we get to cash, that's not gonna be a good thing, right? Commodities, uh, 2.87 percent. Sorry about the handwriting. I'm trying to make it as fast as possible. Bonds, 3.45. Your global stocks, 4.41. Do I sound like a math teacher or something at this point? 
and cash. This is the important one because I know a lot of you are investing in cash. You're just holding on to your money. That is a horrible idea because cash, now you're at less than 1% return if you were to just invest in that 90 day treasury bill or just hang on to your cash. No good there. And if we invest in all of them, we get 5.56% return. It's 5.56. Now this may not mean anything to you, but this is at least a guideline to say, okay, what should I invest in? How should I diversify? And how risky should I be? And rather than invest in just all of them, should I go heavier on small cap and real estate because I have 20 years left until I retire and go real light on bonds and maybe like next to nothing as far as cash goes? Or should you diversify evenly if you're still aggressive, you know, or maybe you should go heavier with bonds because you're close to retirement. This is how they come up with these numbers. So I wanted to break it down for you. Let's take it a step further though. What are the odds that you actually have a profit? How often are these things profitable? The number, the percentage of years that each one of these presents a return to you. Large cap, 81% of the time over the last 40, 48 years, you would have seen that you had a positive return. Okay. Uh, real estate or small cap stocks, 70%, a little more volatile over there. Real estate, 83% of the time you walk away with a profit at the end of the year. Commodities, 70%. Bonds going to be very high because those are obviously tied to a yield. That's 94% of the time. Uh, your global stocks come in at 70% of the time. What do you think cash is? Huh? Can you guess? 100% of the time, of course. And then if you were to invest in all of them, 87% of the time, 87% of all those years, you would actually walk away with a positive return. Now, the last time large cap stocks actually had a negative year was 2008. So the last time you would have fallen outside of that was 2008. Small cap stocks are more volatile. So 2015, we know that. Real estate, 2008. I think you guys remember that. Probably still stings a little bit. Commodities and bonds, 2015. We'll go here, 2015. Your global stocks, 2015 as well. Cash, it doesn't really apply, right? It's always profitable. And then if you invested in all of them, 2015 is the last time you would have seen a negative year. What does all this mean? Well, it means you better pick the right investments, right? You better be focused in for your risk tolerance, or at least work with somebody that knows how to do this. But if you wanted to take a look at that and see how things played out, that gives you a brief overview. Again, this is not my information. This is from Financial Planning Magazine. I just thought it was an interesting article. I wanted to share it with you guys. Do me a favor, post in the comment section if you thought some of this was a little out of whack, like you didn't expect real estate to be the winner or you didn't know that thing about cash actually being next to worthless if you held it for 47 years. Make sure you're invested right. If you need help investing, we work with beginners. We have no minimums. We are working to build the beginner's portfolio so that you have what you need 47 years from now. I hope to talk to you soon. Go to jazzwealth.com. Let us know what you think. And we'll talk to you then. Take it, Satch.